steamers and welcome to the Toad Probe again. It's a tremendous to have the Hungry Beast again in the room. He's, uh, he's going to bear his fangs later on and savage our special guest. Our special guest, by the way, is Professor Chris Turney, uh, climate science prof here at the University of New South Wales. Uh, we might get the ball rolling, uh, Chris, by uh, asking the relationship between the general public and science is at a very low ebb. A lot of people sending threatening emails around the place, death threats. I always think a death threat and science go hand in hand. What's causing this? What's driving this? And what can be done about it? Yeah, that's a good one, the HG. It's a big question at the moment. How much is our behaviour, our, our lifestyles, behaving, um, affecting the climate of the planet? And uh, a lot in the science think that actually driving cars, building houses, cutting down the rainforest is actually driving that, and some people don't. Where do you stand on that issue? Oh, look, the science is overwhelming. Our behaviour is changing the planet. Well, I was going to say, what's the best way to, uh, to, to threaten a climate scientist? A brick through the window or a burning tyre through the uh, foyer? Both are pretty good, actually. <laughs> And do you get threatened? Do people find out they, they dial up an email address for you in yeah, the system? Yeah, emails are a corker. I've got a loony folder on the email and it just all goes in there. <laughs> and and are these, do they, is there any wit about them? You know, we want to get you on a slow boat somewhere inside a rainwater tank with, a, say, a dead rabbit strapped to the bed flute <laughs> and a you know, deadly, br de de <laughs> deadly brown <laughs> type man. Not yet, but I suspect now I will. <laughs> uh, wait, how do you deal with this, though? This is yeah, a yeah, it's, it's funny. There's, there's two different types. There's the ones that are downright threatening and basically just accuse you of unethical behaviour in it for all you can get. And there's others that genuinely are asking questions, look, I don't understand this. And sometimes, only marginally, they will actually listen and go and find out. But a lot of the time, they've just made up their minds. How much of your time is spent answering these queries? Yeah, quite. It's getting, it's getting more and more significant, actually. We're taking up a lot more time. Yeah. Especially over here in Britain, less so. But over here, more so. Perhaps that's a, a long-term game plan of the denialist. Let's keep them asking, answering <laughs> yeah, these questions right. as we yeah. go. The planet will get warmer. Yeah, yeah that's right. They be, they'll be too busy to worry about climate change. <laughs> right. They'll just be busy answering our questions. <laughs> that's right. Email is a curse. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird how it varies from around the world, though, yeah. doesn't it, this debate? In America, Canada and Australia, it's wound right up. Yes. Uh, very exciting stages of, you know, great death threats. In other parts of the world, especially Europe, they've accepted uh, yeah, a lot of the things that you've been right. talking about. And just Maybe moved on. I mean, in Europe, I mean, the original idea that greenhouse gases are driving the climate has been known for 120 years. So it's not new science at all. And where does it stand in, say, the history of science? Uh, you know, obviously Galileo burst into the Prince's Palace at one point and shouted, Eureka, yeah. you've got it all wrong. The Earth goes around the sun, not the other way around. We're not at the centre of the universe. Their sense of certainty went for a Burton, you know, just dived into an abyss. Yeah. I mean, are we at that sort of point? Actually, you, you know, it's not a bad parallel. Probably quite close, actually, because up to the 60s, everyone just thought, well, generally, everyone thought the climate was pretty stable. You know, you find funny winters now and again, but there wasn't much change. It was only after the 60s that people started to realise that climate is a lot more sensitive than we ever thought. So, and that's going to cause a change in our behaviour. Was that to coincide with the popularity of the bikini? Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It was an interesting idea. I'll write a paper to nature on that one. <laughs> now, also, you know, from the 18th century on, if that's the age of enlightenment, I might have the wrong century there. The idea was that man could control nature. Yeah. That's taken a hell of a pounding. Yeah, the road to victory. That's taken a hell of yeah, a pounding. Yeah, we've stepped back a bit. I hope we've stepped back. Not everyone has, though. <laughs> And, and what, do you, what can be done about it, though? Because you spend all your time, obviously, answering questions, yeah. queries and so on. But, but is that all you can do, really? And it's a very, it's a real finger in the dike operation. Yeah, it's a, there's a big debate in the science community at the moment, how much we should be just talking about the science and stopping there, and then how much we should be talking about policy, you know? And that's a difficult one, and people have got different views on it. But I think you can engage people, and the big thing is communicating the public. You know, this is great, we've got a few minutes here, but normally you get a journalist phone you up and they want a one-sentence soundbite. And how do you sum that up, you know? It's very difficult. And that's where most people are getting their signs from. Can you just go, we're fucked? <laughs> well, that message of we're all going to die doesn't go down. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. But and I don't think we are. Right. Well, following on from the beast line of questioning, are you afraid? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Well, and is there a point where you think that, uh, well, you can see the cliff sort of there and we're about here. Yeah. We wouldn't want to get too close because the rising sea level might crumble the cliff That's and then, be, you know, all of a sudden we're falling off. Is that what you... Yeah, I'm a bit of an optimist as well, though. I think we can turn things round, but uh, we just need to start behaving like that. Uh, my colleague uh, recently uh, developed a climate wrap. 
Oh, yeah, yeah which, was a way of, which was a way of uh, trying to bridge this communication, talking to the people in their language. Yes. Do you think there should be more of that? <laughs> Why not? I think it's a great idea. It was dope. It <laughs> went, <laughs> but I think that's what the kids well. are saying. That's what the kids are saying. It actually got played at a climate change conference in Canada oh. and apparently uh, got a standing applause. Oh, so fantastic. Right, yeah, yeah, that was pretty yes. good. In touch with the you for today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're edgy and in your face. Uh, maybe that's what the climate scientists should be. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's right. Well, thanks for coming in today, Chris. Good luck with the uh, the process going forward, and let's hope you don't meet the same fate as, say, Copernicus. Uh, well, or, sadly, no. or Professor Dumbledore. Uh, uh, Professor yeah, Dumbledore. That would probably be a worse, <laughs> oh, a worse fate, yeah. Or how about Plum in the billiard room? <laughs> with the candlestick and a carbon tax. This has been the Toad <laughs> Probe, right here with Professor Chris Turney and, of course, the hungry beast himself, Dan Ellick. See you next time. <laughs>